Good morning. Before we welcome our celebrant, I will lead us in our new parish prayer. Let us pray. Soul of Jesus, sanctify me. Body of Jesus, save me. Blood of Jesus, fill me. Water from Jesus' side, wash me. <clears throat> Passion of Jesus, strengthen me. Within your holy wounds, shelter me. To the service of my neighbor, draw me. To become a more authentic Christian, transform me. Holy Spirit, guide me. At the moment of my death, call me. That we, as a church parish, may praise you with your angels and saints forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah, this message came from the Lord. Thus says the Lord, stand in the court of the house of the Lord and speak to the people of all the cities of Judah who come to worship in the house of the Lord. Whatever I command you, tell them and omit nothing. Perhaps they will listen and turn back, each from his evil way, so that I may repent of the evil I have planned to inflict upon them for their evil deeds. Say to them, thus says the Lord, if you disobey me, not living according to the law I placed before you, and not listening to the words of my servants, the prophets, whom I send you constantly, though you do not obey them. I will treat this house like Shiloh, and make this the city to which all the nations of the earth shall refer when cursing another. Now the priests, the prophets, and all the people heard Jeremiah speak these words in the house of the Lord. When Jeremiah finished speaking, all that the Lord bade him speak to all the people. The priests and prophets laid hold of him, crying, you must be put to death. Why do you prophesy in the name of the Lord? This house shall be like Shiloh, and this, sh and this city shall be desolate and deserted. And all the people gathered about Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Lord, in your great love, answer me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. Those outnumber the hairs of my head, who hate me without cause, too many for my strength, are they who wrongfully are my enemies. Must I restore what I did not steal? Lord, in your great love, answer me. 
Since for your sake I bear an insult, and shame covers my face, I have become an outcast to my brothers, a stranger to my mother's sons, because zeal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who blaspheme you fall upon me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. But I pray to you, O Lord, for the time of your favor, O God. In your great kindness, answer me with your constant help. Lord, in your great love, answer me. Alleluia, alleluia. The word of the Lord remains forever. This is the word that has been proclaimed to you. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus came to his native place and taught the people in their synagogue. They were astonished and said, Where did this man get such wisdom and mighty deeds? Is he not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother named Mary, his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? Are not his sisters all with us? Where did this man get all this? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his native place and in his own house. And he did not work many mighty deeds there because of their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. St. Thomas Aquinas gave us a wonderful quotation. He said, For a person who believes, no miracle is needed. For a person who doubts, no miracle is sufficient. In today's gospel reading, the people of Jesus' native place or hometown cannot believe that the, that the son of an ordinary carpenter could convey such wisdom and perform such mighty deeds. They probably have seen Jesus grow up. They were familiar with their family. They were stuck, as we often can be, in the preconceived notions of the ordinary. I know I can see it from my own family, my own experience. My nickname, and I'm, as you know, I'm from Homa. I have a small family, but I don't get to see them very much. Uh, but my nickname in, with my family is Brother. And so my mother calls me Brother. My, my brother calls me Brother. My nieces and nephew call me Uncle Brother. <laughs> and some of them now call me Deacon Uncle Brother. And so, and they don't get to see uh, my life here in Lafayette as a deacon. And so when I do go home and we start talking shop, they'll say, you can marry people? Or you can bury people? They have no idea uh, that their brother to do or, or perform those type of ministries. And so, again, they have these preconceived notions of our ordinary life. Today, we also celebrate St. Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of the Jesuits. He certainly was no ordinary fellow. St. Ignatius' great gift to the church and to the world is something called his spiritual exercises. I've been going to a retreat house, a Jesuit retreat house. Uh, this is where I'm supposed to be this weekend. We have to miss for, because of the corona. But this will be my 42nd year going to this retreat house. I have fell in love with St. Ignatius. Not so much with the Jesuits, but St. Ignatius. The basic thrust of those spiritual exercises is to make us more aware of God's activity in the world and to respond to what God is calling us to do and for who we are supposed to become. At the core of Ignatius' spirituality 
is this idea of finding God in all things. And I emphasize the all things. But this implies that even the most mundane and ordinary things can be infused with the presence and the activity of God. As we celebrate the Feast of St. Ignatius, let us seek to find the God in the ordinary moments of our lives, in the routine chores that we do, in the ordinary moments of our everyday work, in the relationships that we have. There's a story about a young aspirant to the Jesuits who saw St. Ignatius sweeping the corridor of the Jesuit house at Rome. The aspirant asked St. Ignatius, Father Ignatius, if you knew the world would come to an end in 15 minutes, what would you do? St. Ignatius leans on his broom and he looks at the aspirant and says, young man, I would go on sweeping the corridor. He said, who carries God in their heart bears heaven and with him wherever he goes. On another occasion, St. Ignatius was traveling on foot to Rome with his companion, Peter Faber, who more than 20 years later would succeed him as the second general of the Jesuits. And on this trip, something happened to Ignatius, an experience that made a, a branding iron impression upon him. St. Ignatius had been praying for some time very earnestly, and he said that it's something that he would really, really desire. He was a man of big desire, and he could sense when God wanted to speak to him, when God wanted to impress something upon him, and he would do his all in trying to obtain that grace. <clears throat> Faber tells us that Ignatius was praying to the Father one day in this chapel, that he might be placed with the Son, and he, would, and he was determined to get all the help he could to obtain this grace. He prayed to our mother Mary that she might intercede for, with Jesus to obtain from the Father this singular grace for him to be placed with the Son. So as they entered this village, they saw a shrine and they called in to that shrine to stop and pray. And Ignatius prayed and it became clear to him that the Father had indeed placed him with the Son. Indeed, it was so clear to him that he had been placed with the Son that no matter what happened afterwards, he would never doubt that his prayer had been answered. Faber said, facing us in that chapel that Friday afternoon was a mural of a scene. Ignatius was being received by Jesus. This was not the Jesus of the nativity, he said. Not the Jesus of the hidden life, nor the Jesus of the resurrection, but rather Ignatius was there alongside Jesus who was carrying his cross. It became, one might say, Jesus's, uh, Ignatius' core experience one to which he constantly referred. For the rest of his life, he lived it out. The decisions he took, he lived it out. The society he founded, he lived it out. And when Ignatius died in 1556, his brother Jesuit <laughs> looked to his notes about the many matters that he dealt with as Jesuit general. And he found again and again the references the time when the Father had placed him with the Son. So when Ignatius and his first companions wondered what name their new religious community might take, it was clear that the name they took, had to take, was the company of Jesus. Since Jesus alone was their head, it was Jesus who had taken them into his company that made them companions of him, companions of each other, friends in the Lord, 
alongside Jesus, carrying his cross. St. Ignatius' famous motto is, for the greater glory of God. He taught that it is important for us not to do just good things, but to do them for the right reasons. For it is certainly possible, it is possible to perform good works for bad reasons, mainly merely for money or fame or to draw attention to ourselves or to draw attention away from others or to put off doing something less glamorous work that we should be doing. If we offer every task for the greater glory of God, as Ignatius did, we will begin with the only worthy end in mind. If we work for any lesser goal, it will never, we will never find peace or satisfaction in what we do. I'd like to close with one of St. Ignatius's famous prayers. Take, Lord, and receive all my liberty, my memory, my understanding, my entire will, all that I have and call my own. You have given it all to me. To you, Lord, I return it. Everything is yours. Do with it what you will. Only give me your love and your grace, and that is enough for me. For the person who believes, no miracle is needed. For the person who doubts, no miracle is sufficient. May our God be blessed. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Your goodness we have received, the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands, become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Your goodness we have received, the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, you will become our spiritual drink. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. These offerings we make to you as we celebrate St. Ignatius, be pleasing, Lord God, and grant that the sacred mysteries which you have made the font of all holiness may sanctify us too in the truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on this festival of St. Ignatius, you bid your church rejoice so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching. Keep her safe and answer to his prayers. So with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the heights. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the heights. You're indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the
to do for them, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me History and faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Douglas, our Bishop, and all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. They praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command and far by divine teaching we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Our glory to For Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I need you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. I am a God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. I am a God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. I am a God. You take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and so shall be.
Vincent Brishers, who are watching us online this morning, would like to pray this spiritual prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself fully to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.